sort of a rite of passage for so many people. When did the two of you first encounter her work and, and what has it meant to you over the years? I encountered Judy Bloom's work as a kid. I was definitely one of those Judy Bloom fans who read her books over and over again until they were sort of threadbare. I think for me, you know, I, I had gone through puberty really early and to read a book like Margaret with a character who wants to get her period more than anything is talking about it with her friends, sort of getting inside the mind of a girl protagonist, which was really new to me, was an incredible comfort. It's like seeing yourself in the, on the page in that way is everything when you're a kid. And so went through all of Judy's books. It was definitely a super fan. I have an entirely different experience because I'm a late bloomer in every sense of the word, whether you have it as you know a pun or not. I, I grew up in the South in a town where Judy's books were seen as taboo. And I think uh, girls' bodies were seen as shameful and women's autonomy was seen as something to be feared. And I internalized, I think, a lot of that messaging. And so I was flat-chested and afraid of growing up and afraid of getting my period. I didn't even get my period till I was 16. So I was a very late bloomer. The movie gives you a sense of Judy's sort of evolution in the public eye, but she's not somebody who likes to, to kind of come out there and sort of talk about herself so much. Mm -hmm. So what was the challenge of, of getting through to Judy and then getting her on board? I mean, what, what, what did it really take to get to that point? It was definitely Convincing Judy to do the documentary, it was definitely a long process, beginning with an email in 2018 through to 2020 when she finally decided she wanted to do it. I think that she, she has a really full life in Key West running a bookstore and she knows, she knows about filmmaking and I think she knew enough to know what kind of commitment it would be and also was hesitant, yeah, about opening herself up. And she's the kind of person who, if she's going to do it, if she's going to tell her story, she's going to be honest. She talked about that at our Q&A today. She Zoomed in virtually. So it was like, I'm like, do I want to bear it all or not? And I think for a while she was feeling hesitant, but over you know, a couple of years of checking in, she never said no. The door, I felt like the door was always open. So I mean, and documentary filmmakers go through this all the time, but it was, yeah, process of uh, long correspondence. The other thing that's, that's fascinating is, is that a, mo a book written in 1970, often we look at books that have been revered for, for ages they seem like they're out of touch. And one thing the movie taps into is that her work continues to inform new generations. So what did you learn through this process about, about why that is? I mean, why does something like, are you there, God, it's me, Margaret, still have an impact on, say, a nine or 10 or 11 year old today? I mean, I think the experience of your body changing from the time you're a kid into an adolescent is universal. It is timeless. That's just the nature of time itself, right? It ages your body. And I think the questions kids have about, am I normal? Am I supposed to be feeling this way? Should I be feeling this way? About my friends and about my body and my siblings and my parents. All of those are questions that will be questions kids have forever. And so Judy's books speak directly to them about those questions in a way that no adults did before. And now they're probably having those conversations, but reading it in a book and that sort of private, personal, you know, it, a relationship that a kid has with a story where it's just them under their covers in their bedroom with the words on a page is such an intimate experience, I think helps kids tap into that. So uh, the other thing that I, that I think is notable here I mean, is that you find a way to kind of look at a much bigger picture through Judy's story, which is that we constantly see these issues in which sex is treated as this very controversial topic. And as you were sort of collaborating on this, I wonder how you, you sort of talked through the, the question of getting beyond the specificity of Judy's story to see that bigger picture. You know, was it talking to Judy or looking at archive, you know, what led you to find a, the, the bigger picture in all of this in terms of how sex is talked about in the media and, and the ongoing sense that it is taboo? I think one thing that was happening simultaneously to us developing and making the film was the reemergence of book banning. And so you see through book banning what censors are afraid of today. And a lot of it is sex as it was in Judy's day but then a lot of it is also about race and racial justice and LGBTQIA plus issues. When book banning came up, you had already sort of been working on this. Mm -hmm. So how did it change the course of the project, realizing this was still something in the conversation? We knew we had to include authors whose books are being banned today. And our kids happened 
to be readers of Alex Gino and Jason Reynolds, who have appeared on the top 10 list of banned books many times over the last decade. That was, that became very important. Are You There, God, It's Me, Margaret is finally being made into a movie. What can you tell us about that and what you make of kind of the, the sudden, you know, resurgence of Judy's work? Well, I love that you call it a sudden resurgence of Judy's work. I think we feel like Judy's work has always been sort of bubbling up uh, in, cult in the culture, under the surface in some, I mean, it, her books, first of all, her books have been banned continuously for the past 40 years. Um, and Margaret is something, you know, Are You There God Is Me, Margaret, Judy wrote in 1970. And she has probably been asked, I don't know how many times, to make it into a feature film. And she said no, she said no, because Margaret is her baby and she didn't want to let it go. But I think being able to make this documentary at the same time that the feature film was being made, we got to see the joy that she was experiencing watching her baby be transformed into something entirely new and something cinematic with a filmmaking team she really trusted. And that was kind of a beautiful thing to experience alongside her, to watch her, her joy. It was almost like a rebirth of her baby in an entirely new way. Are You There, God, It's Me, Murder is the most famous of Judy's books, but you cover kind of the, the whole arc of, of her career. So when people are like, where do I begin? Is it always that book that you think is, is the perfect starting point? Or, or how do you think somebody should approach Judy's work? That's a good question. I mean, I think it depends on the age of the kids. Uh, my kids started with the Super Fudge series. We actually, and this whole project started, the whole reason I started thinking about Judy Bloom again was because we were on a road trip and I decided to play the audiobook of Tales of Fourth Grade Nothing. And that series, I think, like a kid of any age can enjoy because they're just hilarious and like, even adults love them. So, but that's, like, that's a great entry point for younger kids. And then, I mean, where do you dive in? It's so hard to say. I think it's so personal, right? Reading is so personal. That's, that's what makes it so special. It's such an intimate experience. But Margaret, definitely for like 9, 10, 11 year olds, Margaret, Margaret is a go-to and a great place to start. And so many people have complex relationships to Judy's work because they've lived with it. You see that in the movie when they come to the store and they, they tell her that. And you do as well. So how hard is it to interview Judy Bloom when you have a million things you want to ask, but you also know that you know, she's only going to answer in certain ways? Well, one, have you talked about how you grew up not reading Judy Bloom? Have we talked about that? <laughs> so I would say, I would just, I, I think having one director who had that really emotional, nostalgic attachment to the books, because there's something about the books you read when you're young. They like, they imprint you, they imprint on you in a really powerful way. Leah didn't have that relationship with Judy Bloom books. And I think having two directors with different, different perspectives on that was really helpful. And we, we had a very long year of prep for Judy's interview because Judy said yes to the film in February 2020. We all know what happens after that. We all shut down. So, you know, our kids logged on to Zoom school and we just started reading and rereading Judy's books and learning everything we could about her life. So we had a lot of time to prep. We were watching archival footage of her and we did very, very long interviews and asked everything we could. It was sort of about like figuring out where, at what points her life in, her life and the books intersected. We didn't want the film to feel encyclopedic, like, okay, we're gonna do this book, this book, this book, we're just taking you all the way through all the books. So we had to really narrow down the books and figure out which books are the ones that really intersect with Judy's life in this kind of personal, personal way. Is there anything that you wish you could have asked her but you knew was off limits or anything like that? I mean, I feel like I'm gonna use the cheesiest pun, but she's an open book, right? She. She just, she can't help but share everything about who she was when she was a kid because she has this extraordinary memory. She has total recall of her life from third grade on. And she wants to share these stories of her parents and she wants to share stories of her friends and her kids and being a mom and her divorces. So it was kind of an extraordinary experience interviewing someone who was so open about all these moments of her life. and. One of the kind of most extraordinary moments, I think, for us was realizing that listening to Judy be so open encouraged us to be so open with each other and our entire crew. We would just, after every shoot, we would just be sharing stories of when we were awkward teenagers and the most embarrassing thing that happened to you and when did you get your period? And it was kind of a beautiful way of connecting with everyone on a more personal level rather than just we're a crew shooting a documentary about, you know, a 
Anyways, I can't even finish that sentence, but you know what I mean. Yeah, well, how important was it to you that she was happy with the way it came out? When did you show her the movie? When did we first show her the movie? Mm -hmm. I remember this song. Towards the end, towards the end of the edit, we showed her the movie. I mean, it's, a, it's the scariest moment for a documentary filmmaker to show your subject the film. And she's, she's thrilled with it. She says it's really emotional to, to kind of look back on who she was writing those books. And, and I think the letter writers in the film she's very, very attached to and very emotional about. And she's really happy that we were able to include them in the way that we did. So, and the last thing I wanted to ask you about it, it I think is relevant to, to all of your work, because I mean, you, you made this documentary about New Yorker cartoons that similarly, I think, shows how popular culture can have an impact on the world in different kinds of ways. And just more broadly, I mean, how, how important is it to you to continue exploring that to look at how storytelling can have an effect on the world, even when you know sometimes aspects of the world try to, to censor it or keep it down. Definitely one of the takeaways for us throughout the making of a film is how important it is for every kid to see themselves in a book, in a movie, on a TV show. I think part of the reason Judy Bloom was so important to me was because I could relate so specifically to the characters in that book. And I think there's a universality to the books where like kids from all perspectives can connect somehow, but every kid needs that really that like specificity of their experience reflected in the world.